Castor, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, well, this is a, a heck of a book. You're very frank about the whole experience. And I want to start with the beginning because you're 18 years old. You arrive on the world stage. You, you dominate a race. And then there are these questions. And at that point, I don't think you had even had a, a full exam or knew what was going on yourself. So mm. I, there's a quote that you have in the book from a race official who says, she's a woman, but maybe not 100%. How do you process all of this going on? And he said that at a news conference. At a news conference. At a news conference in of front course. of the world, yeah. yeah. For me, I'll say it's, it's a disrespect. Uh, one should uh, you know, respect uh, one human rights. I think for me, that's what pissed me a little bit uh, at that moment. Then I was like, you know what? If you think I'm not woman enough, I'm going to show you on the track. Mm -hmm. that, that's what you do. Mm -hmm. You know, I walk the talk. Yes. Yeah. I run. I run fast. I win medals. And then I talk later. At what point did you realize that this wasn't just going to be insulting or embarrassing or rude, but in fact was going to threaten your career? And you have ended up losing uh, four or five years of peak race time. Of course. When did that? When did that? Re when did you occur to you that this was a real threat to your mm. career? Uh, 2016 in the Olympics, when you know I discovered that you know Sebastian started talking about now we're gonna do something about it. I'm like, I'm gonna go make my moments. I'm gonna make them feel me. You understand? And I go home. I talk to Violet. You know what? This is about time for me to show these people what I'm made of. Yeah. Mm. And for me, if I wanna do my last dance. I'm not gonna lose no race. Mm. Yeah. So that's why I went like 30-0. Mm. Yeah. So maybe what that thinks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, Castor, I like Tony, I was so touched by your book because you were discovering things about yourself on a world stage. You didn't know yourself. You said, yeah. I am not a cheater. You were born with female genitalia, but it, also in your body you had higher levels of testosterone. That's why they were questioning you. So you said, what, how did you, you, you said it's hard to explain how it feels to be recategorized as a human being. Could you take us through that moment? Because number one, you're gender tested. You didn't even know you were being gender tested. Let's start with that. And then they give the results by accidentally leaking them to the media. Yes. Just take us to that day and what you went through and how you got through it. Of course, when they say they leaked the, you know, the result accidentally, I was like, no, yeah. that was purposefully. You know, done. But for me, I think that's when I realized, you know, you have the power in you to own yourself. Because end of the day, even if they define you for who they think you are, you should love yourself. And yeah. from that beginning, it was about self-discovery, self-management, self-love. Mm -hmm. I started appreciating myself from there. I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it for my people. I'm going to do it for my mom, for my dad. And the goal was for me to go out there, win the gold so they can be pissed. And they were pissed. Yeah. Because <laughs> after that, it was just the Casta Semenya soccer. Yeah. And yeah. I loved it. Yes, you, you write about really Olympians, bold. Usain Bolt, Michael Phelps, Kay yes. Ledecky, and you say that they weren't questioned when they were breaking record after record after record. Um, why do you think that you were scrutinized so much? And do you think that they should have been tested as well and questioned? But for me, it wasn't about men being tested. The question is always being about why regulate women's sports? Why women, when they do extraordinary things, genetically, they've been questioned. Mm. When a woman do phenomenal, there's something wrong about them. Mm. But when men do good, they're from another world. They're praised. You know, they, they are praised, you understand? But, but Castor, so the, the race, race authorities are, are standing by their rules uh, that, have, that have affected your career. They say they're necessary, reasonable, and proportionate as a way to protect competition for all women. Yes. What do you say to that? It's nonsense because you can't say, if you say sports for all, and then you start regulating women, but then after that you say you want to act in the best interest of women, all women should be protected first. Yeah. You should put human rights first. Yes, I understand that if you're threatened by women's success, of course you'll do that. But at the end of the day, if you come in to say you're going to do this for women, you got to show it. Yeah. And you're gonna act like one. Yeah, you said, I am a masculine woman. That's what I am. I'm very comfortable in my own skin, but make no mistake, I am a woman. Yes, definitely. I still stand by that word. I'm a woman. I'm good. Yeah. I love myself. I like how I rock myself out there. I like how I present myself to the world. But people need to understand that when you understand your identity, yeah. 
you stick by that. Yeah. Mm. It's a hugely yes. consequential life story. There are implications here for a lot of other sports, yes. uh, for human rights globally. Castro Semenya, thank you very much for joining us. The book is The Race to Be Myself. It is available today. Pick it up.